Hello. Just like to um, start off by saying uh, happy solstice. Um, well, for us on this side of the world, um, winter solstice, and um, for anyone on the other side of the pond in Australia, around that side, uh, happy summer solstice. Now, I am going to be talking sort of very loosely about the solstice. Um, there's plenty of information already out there on it. So um, I'm going to be focusing on uh, an aspect of it and just go a little bit deeper. Now, during the solstice, it's uh, the longest night and the shortest day. And um, I don't know whether any of you watching this have watched a sunrise in the morning, whether it's uh, the summer or the winter solstice or any other time of the year. But um, it's obviously quite dark and you just, there is some light there, there's the first light and then there's the, um, the sunrise in itself. And you don't totally get to see everything. There's uh, the detail that comes out as the sun rises and um, there's the murkiness of, uh, as it is in this part of England, uh, slowly, slowly uh, you get to see a little bit more um with the uh the <laughs> um i don't know in some some areas a little bit of fog and steam as it arises and emerges from the earth and um you see the silhouettes of uh trees and you hear the odd animal that just ends up becoming a little bit still and stops just for that moment i always kind of notice the um the birds just stop singing just for a moment and um, I just normally sit quite still and, and become aware of the change of energy. And then I'm aware that the, um, the sun is beginning to rise, sometimes behind the clouds. <clears throat> but um, it's just rather quite nice and peaceful. And um, so what I'd like to talk about is actually the, the, the darkness, the dark part of this world. So we've got, um, I don't mean that in a, an evil way or anything like that, I just mean the darkness, the stillness. So um, I'd like to, yeah, let's start off with um, the, the tales of, of uh, Taliesin. So you have Kerid Wen. Now, uh, Kerid or Kerid Wen, which is spelt uh, in the Mabinogion. This is one of my copies. I've got about three different versions of this. This is uh, Lady Charlotte Guest's. And a nice addition here. I'm not going to read from this, but um, it's it's really really important. It's one of the one. Of, it's actually my favourite of all the Welsh pieces of mythology. And um, the interesting uh, aspect that I find of it is that element of darkness. You have um, uh, Gwion who comes from outside of uh, the uh, the area, kind of coming inside to look after this cauldron. This cauldron of inspiration, and then you have Morda, who's blind, who looks after the cauldron, and um, so you have one who's lighting, another one who's stirring, keeping this going. And Kerid Wen is um, the initiator here. Um, this kind of gets everyone in and puts them in different places, so she can go off and collect herbs. And put them into um, this uh, big cauldron, the cauldron of inspiration. Now, the association of uh, inspiration um, in the Druid tradition is often associated with the uh, summer solstice, but um, you have to also think of the winter solstice as well, where um, you have uh, the uh, uh, the like trigram, um, where you have the um, the sun rising from one side in fact from here um during the uh, the summer it comes in whoops <laughs> yeah comes in from from uh, this side over here and often casts its nice lights just up there if you ever see um my facebook page you'll find like a picture of uh, a heart which is actually uh with some crystals which has come from uh, my window just there as it shines through and on the um uh during the winter 
Uh, I'm not talking geographically, you know, sort of north, northeast, southwest, but it's sort of more on this side. Um, so it comes in land. I'm, I'm right by the sea. So um, you have, uh, during the winter solstice, this time of year, instead of it being just directly east, it's northeast. And then for the um, for the summer solstice, it's or sort of southeast. So you have uh, the light shining in and the shadow casts for the um, for one side, and then it's the same for the other, and then for the equinoxes, it's right in the centre. So you have this these three aspects of um, the um, the solar year coming in really nicely, creating that nice um, band of light. And also darkness as well. Now, um, from darkness, um, you have this element of chaos that you get before um, within um, this darkness, and um, so you need something to um, to create something. So it starts off as nothing, but with some kind of potential. So what you have with this cauldron of inspiration is the potential. So um, so you have two aspects, um, the breath. Now the breath um, you can count as Morda in uh, another myth that's attributed to Taliesin. Um, the breath, uh, it, so the cauldron is kept alight by the breath of the nine maidens. Um, that's in uh, the Welsh mythology. In uh, Greek they're called the Muses. And all the muses have aspects of uh, the arts, so uh, poetry, music, um, you name it, you'll find one for each. And um, one of the uh, uh, the sons of uh, one of these muses is uh, Orpheus, who's um, basically uh, uh, very, very similar to uh, Taliesin. He plays the harp, he has... Uh, rules over the animals and uh, can uh, he basically is like a magician um, or I wouldn't like to say shaman because it doesn't come across that way but um, very very similar and um, his part of his name actually does mean darkness as well um, look it up I found it in a very found it out in a very interesting book just on Orpheus so um, we have that aspect there so there's a darkness and there's a potential so uh, you can think of the potential like um, the difference between our in-breath and out-breath. There's a potential between our lungs to be full and our lungs to be emptied. And between that, you have that potential for it to be full or empty, which really is um, what we need for inspiration. It's like the seed. So um, during this time of the year, um, in western um uh, the western mandala you have uh north and uh winter being attributed to earth which is in darkness because well, that's what's in the earth in the chinese tradition it's attributed to water rather than earth but it's seen as uh, a seed now this is interesting this um i have this here this is given to me by one of my uh tutors at college i'm studying chinese medicine and um if i can find it on here there's a word meaning zhi spelled z-h-i and um oh here it is if i can just bring this close enough it's the one just between my two fingers there you can see that just above and below both of my middle fingers and what you have there is a heart just here and from that emerges um, a stalk, something coming out of the earth and ger means will, so you need the will of this to come out. This comes out of the heart and uh, it's highly, highly important because when we want something to come from um, the uh, uh, the other world into this world, from the uh, so from the uh, 
uh, trying to think of the right word. So we need something to come into physical reality from the other world. And that is really what happens. It starts off in the mind, in the soul, in our consciousness. And um, we need this to be stored and to be nurtured and for it to grow. And for this, we need this to come out. So um, although um, the, uh, the element is different, it's still talking about darkness. The actual colour is, is black. And it means like the, the complete, if you go out into the sea um, and you imagine the water to be completely like, uh, like an abyss, a bit like the sky, you know, at night. And uh, this abyss is so much so that the water is black, a dark colour. Um, we often associate the colour of water with blue, but um, it's, it's a, blue as a colour is actually kind of coming to our consciousness um, not that I don't know quite how long ago, but it hasn't been around for very long as a colour. I think colours develop um, as we develop, uh, like in uh, uh, the Odyssey, uh, it's the wine dark sea rather than it being a, the, uh, the big blue sea, or whatever. So it's very similar. In fact, uh, the Japanese's uh, colour for blue is a light green, so it's it's black. So it's still that darkness. So you kind of get a sense that um, you need to kind of sit in stillness in that potential state to allow something to be moved on. So, to, and I say moved on, I mean for it to grow. So the next step is spring. Now in the, the Chinese medicine calendar, spring is wood, wood that bursts out, which comes out, it's that drive that sense of um, of movement that we have. So right now, we need to conserve our energies. Uh, and while we uh, tonify, sorry, nourish our yin, this will help us have the energy in um, the spring to be able to, uh, to get up and do what we want to do. It's like when we go to sleep, um, the first thing we do when we get up, you know, we get ready, and uh, there's the biggest amount of movement you'll ever find in the whole of the day, and then slowly... About the rest of the day, kind of go in on ourselves. We need to uh, kind of close in and then relax and then get into that still state and then go back to sleep and then have another journey in the other world while asleep, which is quite exciting. Now, I've, I've picked out a few things from a different, few different books. This is a great book, uh, Book of Shang Tzu. Um, just some simple things here, really. You can uh, kind of go away and think about it however you like really. So uh, this is from uh, the chapter on heaven and earth. He can see in darkness, let's start again. He can see in dark, darkest darkness, here's where there is no sound. In the midst of darkness, darkest darkness, he alone sees clearly. In the midst of no sound, he alone hears the harmony. Where depth plunges into depth, he can discern things in the world upon world of its spirits. He can discern the core of all. So in dealings with the multitude of beings, he can fulfil all their wants from perfect nothingness, always in pursuit. He returns for the night's rest, great and small, long and short, distant and near. So, again, it's talking about um, going to that dark state. So, what would be a good idea to do after this, um, watching this video, is to uh, sit and meditate just on... Now, I say focus... I, I just I just want you to be aware of what is going on so you can sit however you feel comfortable as long as your uh, your legs aren't crossed you can either have your hands like this or hands down here hands like this and just below your navel just sitting there and close your eyes and just focus on the feeling of your in and out breath but that moment between. Now this potential 
this siege that I have been talking about, if you think the whole universe is in a seed, just think what can grow from a seed, like an oak tree, from that tiny little acorn. It's pretty amazing because, I mean, you have a cycle. The seed, which is yet to drop from the tree, is still in that pot potential state to then go into the earth. And then, then it's in darkness until the right moment, which will be springtime. So as long as there is um, the right kind of earth and there is water, you need both the fire and the water element there to allow things to grow. And then there's the movement. So it'll always have that potential. And our bellows, our lungs, these are like the, um, the bellows used to um, keep the, uh, the coal burning in a blacksmith's um, uh, forge or in the lab of an alchemist. So um, this is really important. This breath, the breath, uh, the prana, the chi, there's many words for this. In the Welsh, it's uh, Nwithwe or something along those lines. <laughs> Terrible with pronunciations. It's also um, our spirit. Now, the type of spirit I'm talking about is, I suppose, in the Gnostic Christian sense, um, is uh, the Holy Spirit. And this connects our higher self to our lower self. So you can feel that where it comes right in and sits in our seat of chi right here, just below the navel, the dantian. So it's really important to have that um, that sense of self, that sense of consciousness coming right in through the breath and then grounding right down. We need that sense of having both together. You can't focus too much up here or too much down here. You've got to got to think of both so while you are focusing on that moment between the breath also be aware of your connection with your higher self and this will allow this sense of things to come in our consciousness is just not in our brains it's our whole body and everything around our body and our connection to the universe. What is not physical yet. And allow it to come through. And then if you if you feel this is uh, you know right for you, you can even have a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, a still, a dark piece of paper if you like, ready to write down ideas, thoughts, um, many many aspects of uh, of anything you like and just see what comes you'll be surprised so um we have the uh, the new sun coming which will allow for the new harvest and for me the harvest is really what's the next step in that cycle that constant cycle of um of the new um, the new idea. What do you want your harvest to be for this year? So when it comes to um, the solstice and you have any thoughts that come, what do you want for next year? Write down these things and then look for the harvest. Harvest being in September. Write these down. And, um, and see what happens. And um, let me know. It's been nice talking, talking to this screen, but hopefully talking to, uh, to her, whoever is out there and willing to listen. And uh, even if this is not the, uh, the right time of year, and this is like uh, halfway through the summer or something like that, this is still relevant. 
This cycle happens every single day, every single moment, between breaths. So um, don't discriminate with this being called winter solstice. This is not just about this. This is about every moment because we need to be conscious in every moment. Sometimes we can uh, perceive things because um, that's a reflection on ourselves. We need to know the difference. And sometimes it's hard, but as long as we stay strong inside, keep that, that focus down here in the Dantien, keep that strength, your inner chi, build it up with food, with um, laughter, enrich your life and just remember to breathe. That's most important. This time of the year is so hard because everything is so hectic. But we need, in those moments when we are waiting for the next hectic moment, to be breathing. So when that hectic moment of stress comes up, we are already ready because we are focused, we are aware. The next potential moment where something else might just come in, that flash of inspiration. And by the way, when you get that flash of inspiration, your visual cortex turns off just for a moment. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Bright blessings. And my name is uh, James Woodward. <laughs>